Welcome to the Car and Bike Show. I am Siddharth Vinayak Patnikar. Thanks for joining us. Yes, that is the new Tata Safari, the brand new model from Tata Motors that's set to drive into the market in February. Today, you get a first look at the car. The review is on the show next week before you can ask me. But you do get to see another all new model, the Renault Kyger. The global debut just happened and Shams has some details on the car for you now. The much-awaited Renault Kyger subcompact SUV has finally been unveiled ahead of its launch scheduled later this year. With the Kyger, Renault India joins the sub-4-meter SUV bandwagon and the new offering is based on the CMFA Plus platform that has been co-developed by Renault and Nissan. The Kyger sports a more dynamic design language right from the split LED headlamps to the bold grille with the LED DRLs covering the front face. On the profile, it gets square wheel arches along with 16-inch alloy wheels and roof rails. The rear has the good-looking C-shaped LED tail lights, a skid plate and a roof-mounted spoiler. The model also gets a high ground clearance of 205mm. So here we are in the cabin of the Renault Kyger and this gives you quite a modern appeal. Uh, so I'll begin with the driver's seat. Uh, the big 7-inch all digital instrument cluster looks actually quite modern. It's nice, gives you a lot of information as well. And then the steering wheel also looks the right size and has controls on it. And then this 8-inch touchscreen system, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, a lot of other features, uh, something similar to what we saw on the Nissan Magnite. Below that, uh, AC vents and below that controls uh, for uh, the AC uh, and a lot of use of chrome as well as piano black so that's nice uh, there's a wireless charger here as well and a USB charging point that's a game lever for you and then finally a lot of storage options so first the center armrest uh, you can actually store a lot of things here so that's nice I like the way the gear lever the handbrake lever also has been placed and finally uh, two more storage options here one small box on top and a bigger box right below that So here on the second row of the Renault Kyger, just about adequate space that you would expect from a subcompact SUV, not very generous, not short on space as well. As I said, adequate. I am happy with the legroom I am getting here and that is the case with the headroom as well. This is quite tall so that is impressive. I would have preferred the seat to be a little bigger, so maybe a bit more size support would have been nice. But I like the recline and the angle and how tall this seat is, so it takes care of my back completely. Another some of good things here are that uh, I get adjustable headrest for two passengers. 3.6 bed for two passengers, the middle one gets a lap belt. If only two of you are sitting, you also have the luxury of a center armrest with cup holders and a smartphone holder. And here I have my personal AC vent as well as a charging socket. Renault has confirmed a 1 litre turbocharged petrol engine with 98 bhp and 160 nm of peak torque on the car. There will also be a 1-litre 3-cylinder naturally aspirated petrol available with 71 bhp and 96 nm. The engines will be paired with a 5-speed gearbox while the automatic options will include an AMT as well as a CVT. The car will also come with 3 driving modes, Eco, Normal and Sport. Renault claims a fuel efficiency figure of 20 km per litre on the turbo petrol variant. The car is expected to go on sale in the next few months and the prices will be extremely aggressive. So the subcompact SUV segment is already really crowded. The Kyger will join that fray in a few months time. Now the Tata Safari, what a strong brand for Tata Motors, right? But remember, we first saw it as the buzzard at the Geneva Motor Show a couple of years ago. Last year at the Auto Expo, they called it the Gravitas. And well, now the name's gonna be the Safari, so let's go with that. I do think the Safari is the nicest of the three. Okay, now we move on and talk about viewers' choice. We've been showing you lots of the nominees every week. Let's introduce you to some more now.
The MG Hector Plus is the extension of to the Hector lineup. More precisely, a three-row, six- and seven-seater version of the compact SUV. Compared to its five-seater counterpart, in addition to a new cabin, the Hector Plus also gets a host of cosmetic changes and a few updated features. Visually, the Hector Plus comes with a heavily updated front and rear bumper along with a new headlamp cluster with LED projector lights. The SUV also gets a cleaner all-black grille flanked by a pair of new LED daytime running lamps. It is 65mm longer than the regular MG Hector, but the wheelbase remains unchanged. It features the same 17-inch dual-tone alloy wheels, which still look a tad too small for the SUV. The SUV also gets a three-row seating with captain seats in the second row, while the third row gets 50-50 folding seats. Like the Hector, this too gets the same 10.4-inch vertical display that gives you access to a whole bunch of features including the connected car tech iSmart. The three-row SUV also shares its engine lineup with the Hector, so you get the 2-litre diesel and the 1.5-litre petrol as also the 1.5-litre petrol mild hybrid unit. All three engines come with 6-speed manual gearbox, while the petrol version gets an optional DCT automatic as well. Though based on the Hector, the MG Hector Plus is a different car and a better value proposition in more ways than one, which makes it an ideal choice for the 2021 Car and Bike Viewers' Choice Awards category. The iCube is TVS Motor Company's latest electric scooter. Designed and developed in-house by TVS, the iCube also features three battery packs, which are developed in-house. Only the lithium-ion cells are sourced from Korea, and the hub-mounted electric motor has been developed by Bosch. The iCube features a full-color instrument panel with a long list of features and also gets Bluetooth connectivity as well as a dedicated mobile app. The iCube comes with two riding modes, Eco and Sport. In Eco mode, performance is toned down to offer the full 75km range on a single charge. Sport mode is performance-oriented, so the claimed 70km per hour top speed is achieved without fuss, but range is compromised to 55km on a single charge. The iCube offers a well-rounded product with a neutral but likeable design and will also come with public charging infrastructure across TVS dealerships, in addition to the standard home charger. Honda's first all-new launch of 2020 was the Hornet 2.0. It replaces the Honda CB Hornet 160 in Honda's premium commuter motorcycle lineup. The bike is positioned to appeal to the young professional, looking for a sporty commuter bike with engaging dynamics and diesel fuel efficiency. The Hornet 2.0 looks strikingly different from the CB Hornet 160R it replaces. The LED headlight is all new as well as the body panels and there are bigger, bolder tank extensions given to the Hornet 2.0, which is why the appearance is more muscular. There are premium touches like the gold anodized upside-down front forks and the fuel tank mounted ignition key, along with fat tires mounted on the black alloy wheels. The bike gets a single-cylinder two-valve engine, which displaces 184.4 cc making 17 brake horsepower and 16.1 Nm of torque. It is spared to a 5-speed gearbox. The engine is refined, the gear shift slick, and it has a strong mid-range. In terms of features, the Hornet 2.0 gets a full digital instrument console with negative LCD display that offers a bunch of information and a single-channel ABS. The Honda Hornet 2.0 is quite a nice bike and for young adults looking for a premium commuter motorcycle, it offers everything that's desirable. Good looks, 
a smooth and refined engine as well as thought handling which makes for an enjoyable ride. It comes priced at 1 lakh 27,000 rupees. Welcome back to CNB. Time now to show you the Aether 450X. Yes, we waited for some time to finally get our hands on this scooter because it is buzzing. It's also doing really well in the viewer's choice process, by the way. But that notwithstanding, Samir contractor spent time with it to finally get you all these details. Aether Energy was quite the revelation in the electric mobility space and has only improved its models with every iteration. Now as it plans to go pan-India, the brand is all set to make its 450 Plus and the 450X more accessible to customers. This is the Aether 450X in the production spec version compared to what we rode in January which was the pre-production prototype. This is exactly the spec that will be going out to customers. There is a change in setting too because we are not in Bengaluru anymore, which is Aether's home, but in Amchi, Mumbai, one of the nine cities that Aether will be expanding to in the months to come. But more importantly, we now find answers to questions like what the real world efficiency is like and can it perform day to day tasks as your personal mobility electric scooter? Well, that is the future, isn't it? But for that, we need to have a future, and that's exactly why we are here in the RA forest one of the last ecological zones within the city limits in Mumbai and all the more reason why this needs to be preserved as the lungs of the city. Compared to the 450, the new X uses a larger lithium-ion battery pack producing 2.9 kilowatt hours while the electric motor belts out 6 kilowatt or 8 brake horsepower. That's slightly more than the 450 but boy oh boy does that feel a lot. I'm happy to say that the Aether 450X in the production version is similar in performance to the prototype we rode in January. Now this is special because it makes 26 newton meters of peak torque, that's 6 newton meters more than what we rode on the 450 and a lot of that power surge is felt only in the warp mode. Now that's where you maximize on the acceleration and it's the rolling acceleration in particular where you feel all that power coming into fruition. Now what I really like on the 450X is the chassis is brilliantly tuned and that really makes a connect between the rider and the scooter. Now, electric vehicles, especially electric scooters, are known to be efficient but not very rider friendly. The 450X is an exception and in a good way because there is a very strong connect that you have. So even though you have a touchscreen system, fancy technology and connected tech on board, it is the riding feel that makes it so special for enthusiasts. The Aether 450X gets four riding modes, Eco, Ride, Sport and Pop. The warp mode is new and gives you access to the peak torque output. To give you perspective on how diverse the acceleration is in different modes, here's the 450X climbing gradient from standstill in the eco mode and the warp mode. The eco mode promises more relaxed acceleration, while the warp mode is urgent and extremely responsive to throttle input. Aether has improved gradability to 20 degrees and there's ample power to climb a flyover even with a pillion. The electric scooter is lightning fast with 0 to 40 km per hour coming up in 3.3 seconds while 0 to 60 km per hour takes 6.5 seconds. The top speed stands at 85 km per hour with excellent high speed stability. This e-scooter will get your heart racing. While there's no question of vibrations, you do find a strong whine from the electric motor to keep you company and there is some buzz from the floorboard at speeds above 70 km per hour. The weight distribution ratio has been revised and stands at 47 is to 53. The front is lighter now thanks to a lighter digital console and handlebar which makes this a quick scooter to steer. The 450X is also lighter by 4 kg over the 450 and now stands at 108 kg in weight. Direction changes are quick and the scooter is agile. The suspension setup is stiffer than before and the new X feels more confident around the bend. The ride quality is firm but the 450X will sail through small bumps and undulations. The rear monoshock is a bit bouncy at low speeds and feels a little out of place. 
the 12 inch alloy wheels with mrf tires offer fantastic feedback and the brilliant braking setup continues to be a strong point on the electric scooter living with the a350 x also gave us a true picture of what the real world range looks like climbing uphill or riding at high speeds for long periods will drain the battery faster this leaves performance modes like sport and warp best used for overtakes but what kind of charging times are we looking at all right so that should give us about 3 hours for 80% of charge and 5 hours for 100% of charge I'm talking about that in on a single charge the ether 450x will give you about 85 kilometers and that's well decent enough i wouldn't say it's great but that's decent for city rides at the same time you need to understand that the charging infrastructure isn't that great so a two range of 100 kilometers on a single charge would have been really ideal uh then again i say that because at the same time uh the ether 450x is substantially more expensive than the ether 450 which is not on sale anymore and just making that 100 kilometers range or true range at least in the eco mode would have just added more value to this very sporty scooter ether claims 85 kilometers on a single charge but that's only on the eco mode it will drop to 75 kilometers on the ride mode and down to 50 kilometers in the warp mode If you are looking to cover about 70 to 80 kilometers on a single charge on the 450X, it will take some electric hypermiling, but be rest assured, the range is attainable. With the 450X, Ether Energy has also moved to an Android-based user interface. The latest over-the-air update brought Google Maps to the system and offers turn-by-turn -turn navigation. No need to take your phone out. It also gets tire pressure monitoring. Park Assist, Digital Document Locker, Auto Cancelling Indicators, and more as part of the package. Ether will also roll out the Bluetooth connectivity option by April 2021, which will show incoming calls and texts as well as music controls. The 450X also comes with fast charging, the only scooter to offer this feature compared to its rivals. But the fast charging stations itself are limited across the country. As Ether expands its dealership network in new cities. The company will set up fast charging stations in public areas. The 450 gets a sharp and futuristic design, grabbing the right kind of attention. So why fix something that's not broken, right? Barring the new color options, there are no design changes on the scooter and it continues to get the LED lighting, slim panels and top-notch build quality and everything feels sturdy. This also means that the seat height continues to be higher than regular scooters, while the high set floorboard can get a little uncomfortable. This also causes the knees to obstruct the handlebar around the bend. Priced at one lakh sixty thousand rupees, ex showroom Delhi, the new Ather 450X is a good fifty thousand rupees more expensive than the erstwhile 450. That's steep by all accounts. There is also the entry level 450 Plus, which is twenty thousand rupees cheaper and bridges the gap, but it also sports fewer features and less talk in comparison. What we need then at least in the short term are more subsidies from state governments to make electric offerings more affordable. The closest rivals to the 450X include the Bajaj Chetak and the TVS iQ. Both models though are substantially cheaper compared to the 450X. The Ather 450X leaves you grinning every time you get off the saddle and it's the high desirability cushion that lets you overlook some of its flaws like the range and even pricing. There are very few scooters that are both fun and practical. Fewer even are electric and made in India. With an accessible charging infrastructure and lower price point, the 450X can be a game changer. The transition to personal mobility then looks stylish, electric and sustainable. So don't forget to cast your vote because you could get lucky and drive home a brand new car, a scooter or a motorcycle and you know what it's a bigger than ever viewers choice this time lots of excitement around it the URL is on your screens go and cast your vote now okay remember to join me next week because we'll have the review of the Tata Safari and a whole lot more so until then it's goodbye please wear your seat belts please wear your helmets